I think that this is a really excellent tripod. Now, there are a few things that I wish were different, but I'm gonna talk about all of those things in this video. So I'm gonna set this over to the side and I'll just really quickly talk about the packaging that it comes in and some of the specs of this tripod as well. So this is the box that it comes in. There's a little flap of foam here. And then on the inside, it's pretty standard. It's uh, just a molded foam insert. Just kind of keeps everything protected during shipping. It does come with two Allen wrenches just for adjusting things on the tripod if you need to. It does come with this carrying case, carrying sleeve. It's just a drawstring top. And then it does have a separate sleeve on the back here which is for this little extender column. Now just going through some of the specs which are listed on this little card here, it has a minimum height of 4.4 inches. So that means that the tripod, as you see it here, you can adjust the legs out to where they're almost entirely horizontal and that will drop you down to just 4.4 inches off the ground. So you can get super low with it if you need to but then it has a maximum height of 28.2 inches. Now that again is just the tripod as you see it here. So that's not including the extender column which comes with the tripod and this adds an additional 26 inches. So this is with my Sony a6400 on top of the Oban tripod with everything fully extended. So it's now at its maximum height of just over 52 inches. And with the 16 millimeter lens, I'm just over five feet away from the camera in order to get the framing that you see here. In such a lightweight and compact tripod, you actually have a tripod that's still usable as a floor standing tripod. So that to me is incredible because it comes out to well, what's listed here is 1.1 pounds, but I never like to trust listed weights. I like to weigh things for myself. So I have a scale here and I figured we would weigh the tripod really quickly, see what it comes out to. 1.09 pounds for the tripod and the ball head. So that tells me that most likely what they're weighing in here at what they have listed at 1.1 pounds does not include the center column. So that's the ball head and the tripod. So the center column weighs in at 0.18 pounds. So total coming in right around one and a quarter pounds. And then the impressive thing about it is that it has a load capacity of 11 pounds. Now I'm not exactly certain if that's supposed to be for just the tripod itself or the tripod with the extender column. But what I can tell you is that this thing is sturdy enough Personally, I would have no issues putting more than 11 pounds on this tripod without the center column. Now, I'll talk more about that later. Like I said, it does get a little wobbly once you add the center column on. I probably would not go over 11 pounds, but this thing is just rock solid as it is right here without the center column. Now, really from the moment that I took it out of the box, I could tell it's just, it's really well made. I mean, the majority of this construction is either carbon fiber or aluminum. In fact, the only plastic pieces I've been able to find out of this entire setup are the little collets that are in the legs and this extender column that are made just to be able to tighten down and lock the legs in place, which I can kind of understand why you would use plastic for something like that. And then I believe that this knob and this knob are plastic, but everything else from what I can tell is either aluminum or carbon fiber. So taking a closer look at the ball head that comes with this tripod, I've been really, really impressed with it. The locks on it are perfect. And in fact, this uh, pan lock here, I would say that it's still smooth enough that you could absolutely use it for uh, smooth panning shots if you're recording videos or trying to get a panoramic photo or anything like that. Then on the side here, we have the knob for adjusting the tension for the ball itself. So this is what you would use to actually adjust the position of the camera. And I really like that this one has a little lip on the side so that not only makes it just easier to adjust, but it just makes it a little different from the completely circular knobs that are used for the pan and for tightening or loosening the plate. And that's just nice because I know which knob I'm grabbing without even having to look down at the ball head. And then moving on to the top here, the thing that I really love the most about this is that even though it's a small ball head, 
it still uses an Arca Swiss style plate on the top. So I'm currently recording with my A6400, so I can't use it in this video, but I do have the cage that I typically use on that camera, which still has an Arca Swiss style, like a full size Arca Swiss style plate on the bottom of it. And I can still pop it right onto this tripod just like so. So you're not limited to just the little tiny plate that it comes with. But since I already have Arca Swiss plates on my camera, I was able to use this one because it's the perfect little size for this phone mount. And that's been great because if I just need to record something quickly, especially when I was traveling with this, if I don't want to pull out my mirrorless camera, the tripod, being that the ball head works with Arca Swiss plates, it's super quick to swap out from a full-size camera to something like a phone adapter. So uh, you can even use this as a selfie stick. Now, honestly, this is a pretty minor thing, but the only bubble level on this head is the one right there on the back side of the plate adjuster. The only way to really use that one is when you have the plate entirely vertical, which I almost never use in that orientation. So it would have been nice to have a little bubble level on the top just to be able to get things perfectly level. There are easy workarounds for that, but just one thing that I kind of would have liked to see slightly different on this ball head. And then one other feature that I'll point out at the bottom of all three of these legs, there's a little rubber tip here, which is on there quite snugly, so I wouldn't at all worry about these things just coming off at random, but you can pull off the little rubber tip there, and then that exposes the little spike that's in the end of all three of the legs. Now, Open previously released the CTT-1000 table tripod, which is basically the same tripod, but just shorter. So this is the CTT-1000L, which is just a longer L for long. It's just a taller version of that tripod, but they still have this listed as a table tripod. So in the past, the issue that I've always run into with table tripods is that they typically run, I would say between six and nine inches tall. And the issue with that is that if you're in a situation like I am right now, where I'm sitting here at a table, I have the tripod on the table, the camera, in this case, my phone mounted on top of the tripod at six to nine inches tall, it's at least tall enough to get the camera off the table, but it's still short enough that I'm having to look down at the camera, which just, isn't the best angle. So the nice thing with this tripod and the extra height that it has is that it brings the lens up to about eye level, which is a much better angle for the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my phone just so that I'm not waving it all over the place. And then to adjust the legs in or out, they just have these little twist locks. So you just twist it lefty loosey to loosen it up and there are three leg sections, so you can extend them all the way out like so. It is quite tall with the legs extended. And when you tighten the legs down, they lock in really nicely. I've had zero issues with the legs slipping, even with a decent amount of weight on this. Now, if you're going to be using this as a floor standing tripod, the majority of the time, you're probably gonna be using the extender column. So I've collapsed the legs back down here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And I'm going to put the extender column on the tripod. The first thing that I'm gonna do here is just unscrew the ball head from the top of the tripod. So while I'm swapping this out, this is a good chance to talk about the threads, just in case you're curious. On the tripod itself, it is a quarter 20 thread. And then on the bottom of both the extender column and the bottom of the ball head, it's actually a 3 8 inch, and then they have a 3 8 to quarter adapter in the bottom of both the ball head and the extender column. So it simply just screws on to the top of the tripod. Then the top of the extender column is that quarter inch thread, and you can just screw the ball head on like so. So in the same way that the legs are three sections, the extender column is three sections as well. The same little tightening knobs and collets, I mean, it's basically just another leg. So this is what you can use to extend that up another 26 inches. Now, the main thing that I wish was different about the design of this tripod is that, like I mentioned earlier, this is as far around as the leg will rotate. And I wish so badly that they would rotate all the way around effectively just so that the folded length would still be the same even with keeping the center column attached because as of 
right now with this design, you either have to deal with the folded length being twice as long, or you have to take off the center column and then reattach it anytime you want to use it. So with all of that said, I've been using this tripod for the past few weeks now, so I'll just kind of talk about my experience using it. First of all, this ball head, I kind of raved about it earlier, but 10 out of 10, it's been excellent. Even with the a6400, which is a mirrorless camera, that's going to be a little lighter than a DSLR. You know, that's still well under the weight limit for this tripod, but the ball head itself has been excellent. I've had no issues with it. The tripod, like just the, the three legs themselves, it's been excellent as well with it in the position that I have right now with it angled out just that to that second stop. Um, it's super stable. I would have zero issues putting a slider or something uh, in place of the extender column. The extender column, it's great in the sense that it does add another 26 inches, so it does make it usable as a floor standing tripod. With something light like the cell phone or if you have like a GoPro or an action camera, something light, it's no issues whatsoever. But if I put a heavier camera on here, even with the extender column collapsed, you start to see a little bit of wobble. So just to give you an example of what to expect, this is with the Sony a6400 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens and about a one pound external battery all mounted on top of this tripod. And right now I have the tripod legs all the way extended and the center column attached, but the center column is collapsed. So if I just, touch the tripod, you can kind of see a little bit of wobble, and then within a few seconds, it's pretty much stabilized. So that, not bad at all. Let me lift it up a little bit. Now this shot is with one section of the extender fully extended. So now if I just kind of bump the camera, uh, the wobble continues for a little bit longer, but there I would say within 10 seconds or so, the camera has now stabilized and is perfectly fine. And then if I bump it up one more time, now this is with the tripod still fully extended and now all three sections of the extender fully extended. So this is as wobbly as this tripod is possibly gonna get. And like I said, I've got close to five pounds on the top of this thing. So if I bump the camera this time, you can see the wobble is a little bit worse. It will eventually settle down and even out and it will be you know stable once again, but this time it's gonna take probably close to 20 seconds or so to really stabilize. Overall, you know, you're just not gonna use this with the extender column at least. Don't use this for like a time lapse or time exposed photos, something where stability is essential. Now remove the extender column, use just the legs, I think you'd be perfectly fine. So no, this tripod is not going to replace your big five pound tripod, but for its size and weight, it is excellent. And in fact, it's the size and weight of this tripod that is probably the whole reason that you would go and buy one. For example, this is the camera bag that I use whenever I'm traveling, and I've wanted for a long time a tripod just like this one that is small enough that I don't have to debate on whether or not I'm going to take a tripod. I can just take it, and if I don't use it, it's not that big of a deal. So I went uh, just recently, my wife and I went on a quick vacation up to the mountains and so I decided I was going to take this tripod with me and I was able to carry it very easily just in this little side pocket and it turned out to be great because we went to see a waterfall I was able to just really quickly pop the tripod out screw the extender column on and get a little shot of us next to the waterfall and one thing that I didn't anticipate using this tripod for that turned out to be excellent is using this on a gimbal. I used it recently when I was getting some gimbal shots of a tent for my other YouTube channel, and it was great because I could extend the legs and get all the reach that I would typically get with something like a monopod for getting something like jib shots with the gimbal. But then at the same time, at any point, I could just spread the legs out and set the gimbal down wherever I needed to, either just to set it down or to get a stationary shot or whatever. So all in all, this is an excellent tripod. I mean, just the multiple uses that I found for this thing in the first few weeks of using it, it makes me very sure that I will be using this quite often going forward. If you would like to check it out for yourself, you can head over to the B&H website. I'll have a link in the description below. Or if you have any questions for me, you can leave them in the comments section. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.